on, I wish I were the only one who believe every word that God has said about you. I'm the blessed of God. I'm the healed of God. I'm above only and not believe. Oh, somebody receive that you're the lender and not the borrower. Who am I talking to? I got the faith the size of a mustard seed to believe that I receive everything that God has said about me. Oh, I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Somebody shout, I believe. Oh, Bruce, I do believe it. Oh, Bruce, I do believe it. If you believe it all over this great world, will you slip your hands up right there? as a sign of surrender and as a sign of agreement that we do believe every word God's Word. You walk according to His Word, and you'll never have another scared day as long as you live. Some folks talking about, man, you better not go down there to that part of town, man. Them folks that hit you in the head down there. Ooh, man, I ain't never going down. Man, that's a bad part of town. Ooh, man, them folks down there, they might, they might do anything to you. What are they going to do? Now, now, let me ask you this question. See, if you really believe that, now, 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 if you are walking down the street, okay, let's say you're walking down the street, and on your left-hand side, was Godzilla. On your right was King Kong, and flying over your head was Rodan. <laughs> now, who would you be afraid of? What dark street would you be afraid to go down? Huh? Uh, you walk down, anybody bother you? Say, you'd say to sick him, Kong, get him, Kong. Well, I want you to know that you have somebody with you that's bigger than King Kong will ever be. You've got God Almighty on your side. He's with you. But now you're going to have to believe that, see? You're going to have to believe that. You're going to have to confess that it's true and then act like it's true. more than you could ever know that goes on here before we get started. Good night, good night, good night, everybody. I know everything is already all right in the name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to Nightcap. You know what Nightcap is. Nightcap is just a recap of the things we talked about. Again, it's still going on. <laughs> Oh, praise the Lord. Uh, closing the shot so they won't see what's happening around here. There you go. Oh, praise God. It's exciting. And the, okay, praise the Lord. Then you just walk right there. <laughs> oh, praise God. It's going to be better than this, I promise you. 
<laughs> just because your start has been a little shaky doesn't mean you're going to finish the way you started. Woo, glory to God. How about that? How many of y'all know sometimes in life things don't start off quite the way you want them to? But if you'll just remain in faith, Lord Jesus, the stuff that's going on <laughs> around here right now, if you could only see. That's the benefit of being here, right, gang? But we're going to get it together, I promise you. Uh, let's see who's here. Leroy is here, Mo, Mark, and Darling, and Andriana, Andrine, Andrinetta, Andrinetta. Why? Tell me her name. Yeah, something. I, she always jumps on me about her name. Virginia and Gina and Regina and Teresa and Robin Rogers is in the house. Uh, Fred, Minister Freddie is here. Thank God for all of you. Well, what's going on? We can't tell you what's going on. You would just have to be here in the building. Javon, he said, I'm in the building for nightcap. Okay, uh, by way of virtue, right? Nelda and Natina. Okay, Yvette. Hello, can someone please help me with dinner for me and my three kids? Single mom struggling here at Food Line now. My cash app. Girl, who you think we are? You done lost your mind. Don't you ever come on in with that. Tell you what, get, leave Food Line and come over here and meet me at Nightcap, and I'll take you back to Food Line and I'll buy the store. Yeah, now see how serious you are. You want to feed your babies, and I'll put gas in your car, too. Who you think? Man, ain't nobody Sam Sauce's head. We used to go for that kind of stuff in the 80s, man. We don't go for that kind of stuff now. Okay, under the weather. No, you aren't. You're not under the weather. You're not under anything. You over everything. In Jesus' name. Well, listen, not only are we cutting up in here, they cutting up out there. <laughs> yeah, okay. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I almost hate. What did I just say? I said almost because hate is a very strong word. It's a very strong word, and it comes with some very diabolical outcomes. Uh, hate, it's, it's, a, it's a very strong negative energy or force. Uh, uh, and so I almost hate, almost hate, I, I don't even like the word, uh, but I don't like, like with a passion, uh, us concluding as he is. I can stay on as he is until <laughs> until Jesus comes. Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord. Yeah, it's 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, praise the Lord. E everything is already all right. Okay, praise God. Um put something stronger here in my drink so I can just kind of get away from myself. Yeah. It's, all, it's in your bag. Yeah, you all are cutting up. No, I mean, I can stay on this as he is for like until he is here. Um, I, I can't tell you what it's done for my life personally. Uh, if, if this message has ministered to you uh, at all, and did you get my slides uh, from this? Morning, the email. <clears throat> you should have all my notes concerning this lesson. Um, it is so imperative. What did I just say? So that you become this lesson. Right. It can't be something you just. <clears throat> I wonder if he knows he steps into the camera every time he. He goes down. Yeah, there he is again. Praise the Lord. He, they, we, okay, so for those of you who don't know, something was knocked over and it's spilling all over the floor and people are trying to take care of it. And so there you have it, okay? It's all right, but we're working on getting things together. Praise the Lord. Um, the slides were off the chain. Let me tell you what else would be off the chain, Yvette. Your life. 
because the slides won't fulfill its intended purpose until you let them slide into your character and begin to be lived out. God, dog it, man, you got to purpose this stuff in your heart. <clears throat> you know, for me, as a pastor, I have never, and by the way, uh, the news I haven't been able to tell you all about, I'm having a meeting concerning that news Thursday. So I need all of you all interceding about the news that I haven't been able to tell you about. But if you pray, I'll be able to tell you real soon. And when I tell you, it is exceeding abundantly above all that you can access. If it has blown me away, it is unfathomable what it would do with you all. Yeah. Yeah. So, so pray about that. But at the same time, with respect to this lesson, purpose this thing in your heart. Become. That was one of the uh, back end slides that I was talking about. What, is there anything you all want me to address before I start digging around into where I was going to go? Is there any area that you thought? Uh, and then like and share right now, those of you all who are viewing uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, what else are, are we on? YouTube, like, share, and subscribe. You share because you care. You like because it's, it's your man, Mike. And then you subscribe because it's alive. And you comment because you are in it. Okay? Yeah, so, so, so be a part of all of that. Um, how, about, how, about, how about any of your comments? Yes, ma'am. Colossians 3.10, put on, put on. You all have your slides? You can, you can, you can look into your, uh, uh, your, your notes if you like. Uh, those of you who are at home, you can do the same. Let's, let's really dig into this because, like, um, I'm, I'm pulling away from this... Uh, and our next series of lesson is, ooh, I got it right here. <clears throat> I want to say it exactly like, faith for more than ever before. Faith for more than ever before. Faith. You can, you can always count on this ministry or my assignment covering something concerning faith annually, okay? Because this ministry, our core values are based upon five things, faith, family, finances, fellowship, and fitness, okay? And so those are the core values. So you can always expect for me to be covering something about those core values. The pillars that holds up, of course, the overarching banner and theme for the ministry are or is love, faith, right? Wisdom and, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, because there's the power of the Spirit or Holy Spirit. Because love is the greatest motivator. motivator. Faith is the greatest activator. Wisdom is the greatest navigator and Holy Spirit is the greatest accelerator. And then of course the overarching, that's why, and then see the house is up on the screen right now. We practice, we watch this, we prioritize, we practice, we perfect the plan that God has for this house. And if you understand, of course, what we see here, you will understand how this house along with your house is built. Okay, yes, ma'am, Colossians. Okay. 
<clears throat> These lines are not numbered, are they? Colossians 3, 10, you're... Uh, no, you're actually, it's 12. Okay. 3, 12. I just... Um, when it was you saying, went on to 12. Yes, sir. My okay, so is, you're is jumping 10. 12. Yes, sir. Because I got 12 through 14. Yes. Okay, I let's go there. About 12. I'm when right it, here with you. And I, I you know, um, the long suffering... Well, I'm go ahead and, and read it first. Okay. Therefore... Therefore, what's the therefore, the, therefore... Because it's therefore. It's therefore. <laughs> well, something happened in 11. Mm. Therefore. See? Mm -hmm. You see that? Where there is neither. The uh -huh. therefore is there for something. Mm -hmm. And it's actually segue or attached to 11. It could also say, so then. Okay? Whatever 11 says. I don't have 11 here before me because I just have my slides. Okay, so 12 just says, therefore, as the elect of God, uh -huh. holy and beloved, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies. Put on what? Tender mercies. Ooh, you gonna put that on this week? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's already on somebody said, come on with your bad self. You already put that on, read on. Kindness. Kindness, humility, humility, meekness, meekness, long suffering, long suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving, bearing one with one another and forgiving. What do you one think another. bearing with one another is? Dealing with, uh, dealing with them, yeah, putting, putting up, up with, with them, them. <laughs> being, being patient. patient with them. Okay. Um, now, are we being patient with people? Or are we being long-suffering with people? See, because patience is personal. Long-suffering is for others. Okay, that was my question. That was your question? Yes, it was about long So, okay, so long-suffering is what I extend to others in order to bear them. I suffer long in whatever someone is going through then I need to go through with them. That's what I give to others. Patience is what I have. I can't give anyone patient. I can be patient, but I give long suffering that cause me to be patient with them. Does that make sense? <clears throat> okay, so that was your question? Exactly you wanted to expound long on long suffering. Is, yeah, yeah what, because I can be a piece of work for a while, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. I really can. Mm -hmm. So how long are you going to put up with me? Mm -hmm. No, for real. How long do you decide or will you decide to put up with me and deal with what I'm taking you through? You know, there are a lot of people who are unmarried today because there were no, there was no long suffering. I, I ain't gonna be putting up with this all the rest of my life. But but that's what you said until death do us part. I can't get no help in this nightcap. Man, Dr. Didi had to put up some put up with some stuff with umwa. And thank God, she'll tell you today, thank God I suffer long. In other words, I stressed out the thing long, long enough to get the kind of results I'm getting right now. And I'm wondering, I'm really wondering if in fact she would say, she's probably listening. I wonder, sweetie, say, it, has it been worth it all? Has it been worth it all because the devil doesn't want you to see the end of your long suffering. He just wants you to see what you're in. And he wants you to quit so, because he never wants you to see what God has already planned for you. And, and these youngins today, these youngins, these youngins ain't having it. These youngins tell you, I'm, I'm out. You've been married a hot 18 months. 
a hot 18 months. Yeah, yeah, I'm you're yeah, look out for uh uh Dr. Didi uh uh um uh, uh Tansy. You've been married two years. Three years. I mean, you don't know, you don't know, you you really will never know how good marriage can be until like the 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th year, somewhere along there. Because, I mean, you're really just kind of getting to learn the person. They've been who they have been all that, that, all that time. What'd she say? Totally. totally. You, you, y'all sure that's her? There's no picture or in there or anything. Totally. How will I know that's you, Dee Dee? Yeah. Yeah. So, but totally. And everything I've gone through with her has been totally worth it. Would I want to go through it again? Heck no. Did I ask to go through it that time? Sort of like. A little bit because of what I was doing. Okay, let me get off of that. Apostle Freeman, come on, sir. What would she say? She texts me. Let's, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's her. <laughs> totally worth it. It would have to be totally worth it for one. It would have to be totally I, worth I, it? I, I, I would uh, can you just totally get a mic? Sure, can. <laughs> yeah, there's one on that side. Why are y'all handing? Y'all jumping on. It's a mic. What? We do this weekly. It was just too slow. I got Praise it, man. Yes. Man, we got and the two. reason why I say, oh no, how do we thinking. get it back over here? <laughs> okay. And I was thinking about that because I'm like, okay, with I wouldn't say the marriage was open because you're a pastor and that's your first lady. It's kind of like open for whatever. You don't really have a private. She's first, last, only. And one and only. Yeah. Um, because she's your one and only. My thing, I, I look at it from like being raised in the house with pastors. Mm -hmm. So it's like my grandparents' life was never their life. It's like their life and the church life. Right? Absolutely. So it's like, yeah, you would have to totally put up with a lot because it's you and them. It's always the church thing in there. There's always the church. There's always the church. But for you all to have that time just to deal with something personal or something that you have to, you all are really battling with, I'm sure that was kind of hard. So that had to be a decision to stay with you. It wasn't just like, you know, well, yeah, I'm just going to stay with, you know, I'm just, no, that was a totally decision. She knew her life was going to change. She knew it had to be a better way. She still trust and believe in God. Trust and Through believe in God. all that was going on, mm -hmm. I still want to be with him. Yeah, uh, the up close and personal just reveals or becomes a reflection in a mirror. Our spouse is the mirror showing us us, the us we have been able to ignore. We have been able to ignore. Is she philosophizing? Is it Socrates? What is she? Yeah, okay. Um, Okay, but as well as he is, warrants staying with her. Because he said he would never leave her nor forsake her. And she what? She had to trust that. I don't know whether she trusted it or not, but... Uh, she stayed. Well, she left one time. She came back, though. And did it three times. Okay, enough of us. We, but we got that. How is this personally impacting your life as he is? Pass that mic. Do you have a mic? I'm here. It's sitting right there next to you. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, how do we get that other mic over here? Okay, all right. Okay, yes. Um, I, 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 I look at that like we, you, I, I think the long suffering piece part, um, it's almost like a model, if, if I'm saying it correctly. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, I, I, it was right here and I, I just got lost in it. Okay, okay. Um, it'll come back and I'll okay. say it. Yeah, so we'll wait on back. it. All right, so while we're waiting, um, I want you to go to what slide would that be? Um, Second Corinthians chapter number nine, verse seven. It starts off saying, based upon many testimonials. I, I, want, I want these slides to be numbered for now on just for identification's sake. Based upon many, pardon me? Okay, yeah, that'd be difficult. But it starts, it starts off, says, based upon many testimonials and feedback, I want to revisit a statement and a scripture found in 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse 7. Do you have that? Yes. I, I can't tell you how many people have spoken to me about this particular revelation they've received. It, it was so profound. It's probably one of the most profound things that's ever been revealed to me in the scripture. Because you got to understand that this whole 2 Corinthians chapter number 9 starts off concerning giving. And even when it gets to 6, it talks about a very familiar passage of scripture that pastors use all the time to get more money from y'all. If you give sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. If you give bountifully, and then they'll ask you, how do you want to reap? And most people will say, you want to reap bountifully. So in order to reap bountifully, you must do what? So bountifully. Because you can give, but you can give sparingly. Now, let's turn this into a life application, not just a sowing of money. This is what it's referring to, pretty girl. What's your name? Katie? Yeah, I know Katie. You know I know Katie. Katie, watch this. If you will sow sparingly this as he is in your heart, you're going to reap sparingly. If you will sow this scripture or purpose this thing in your heart bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. How bad do you want to be as he is? See, see, so it's not just a giving scripture. It's a living scripture. I so badly want to reflect Jesus in the earth. And it's something that I've purposed in my heart. Like every time someone comes along and rubs me, rub me the wrong way, I got to make sure I've purposed this as he is in my heart. Because my response, I've always wanted it to be like Jesus. I want people to meet him without ever meeting him when they meet me. So when I saw this, verse 7 really ministered to me. Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart. Now, now I have the 
old or the first translation of nine and seven. I don't know what they gave you. What do you all have? Do you have each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give? Okay, well, that was changed in between eight and ten. Okay, anybody have a scripture? You, you have your Bible out. Now, 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 I need you to look at the New King James Version or the King James Version and read it out. Stephanie, you, you got it? Yes. Read it. Which, which verse 7? Verse 7, please. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart. There it is. So let each one do what? Give. Give as he what? Purposes. It's something, it's something that registered to me. It's something that has obviously registered to others because I got so many testimonies. I got so much feedback about one woman told me, she said, she said, you'll never know it looking on her face. She said, I've been snorting heroin for a long time. Mm. She said, it wasn't until I heard you mention this lesson that I really felt that I could be set free. She said, because I never purposed in my heart to stop. Always said, God, I want to get off of this, but I never, like, Set my heart to stop. Amen. Let me tell you something. It's something about when you start prioritizing stuff in your life, you set yourself to do something, mm -hmm. and then you meditate it. This formula, you meditate, you rehearse this in your heart. You see yourself. Even if you have to hit that, hit that joint, hit that, what they call them, what they call them, stick, hit that, what they call them, Sean? That weave, that joint, that blunt. If, Sean, don't, Sean don't really smoke or know. She just been around people. Yeah, yeah, right. But but you know, you know. I don't care if you pouring the henny or pouring the tequila. What is it? What, what's that one? What's that one? Uh, Patron. Patron. Not, no, 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 not, no, not Mad Dog. Oh, Lord Jesus. Girl, we got to get your money right. Got to get her money, man. While you putting that thing up, you, and all you 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 cats that just want to be big boys with the cigars, that's just a look nowadays. You just you just want to you just want to you just it's just it's just it's sad to see you so captivated and so consumed and sucked in by a a, a cultural. Uh, a fad or uh, uh, something that looks like, you know, you smoking cigars, now nah, you made it. You, you, you big boy. <laughs> and then the worst thing about it, some chicks then start picking up sticks. Just, 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 just blowing them up. It's just, it's just, you so, you so, you so swept away by what goes on in society, you, you're not even interested in reflecting who he is. Even if I did smoke cigars, I don't. Even if I did drink, I don't. Even if I did smoke weed, I don't. You would never know it. Let me take you to 1 Corinthians for a minute. This is off the script. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 8. 1 Corinthians chapter number 8. 
put that up on the screen media department. You, you, you more, you more interested in highlighting you than you are Jesus as a Christian. Something's wrong with you. Now concerning things offered to idols that now that Paul is just straightening out things. Da, 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 da. Verse number two in uh, in eight gone. And if anyone thinks that yeah he knows anything, you're right in there. Verse number three, right? Because I'm going somewhere. But if anyone loves God, this one is known by him. Verse four, uh, please. Therefore, concerning eating of things offered to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is no other God but who? But one. Go on. Come on. Come on. Uh, for even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or earth, as there are many gods and many idols, go on. Yet for us, come on. There's how many? The Father of whom all things, and watch this, and we for him, of whom are all things and we for him. One Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we live. Next verse, watch this. However, there is not in everyone that knowledge for some with, watch this, a consciousness of idols until now eat it as a thing offered to an idol. And their conscience being what? Is what? You, you, you get involved in stuff. Okay, but watch this. No, okay, but go on eight, eight and eight. For food does not commend us to God. For neither if we eat are we the better, nor if we do not eat are we the worse. Okay, watch this. Go on. Verse 9. But beware lest somehow this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to those who are what? Weak. Watch this. Go on. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge of eating in an idol's temple, will not what? Will not the conscience of him who is weak now be emboldened to eat those things offered? Okay, this is talking about eating and drinking on the idols. They're getting all carried away and that kind of thing, thinking this God that made the bellies, their gods and all this kind of stuff. But I'm talking about drinking and I'm talking about smoking. If I drink in your presence and you weak, I just became a stumbling block to you because you don't know any better and you think and see me as a man of God you going to drink and not even have the knowledge I have concerning drinking and cause yourself to drink yourself in some type of stupor. And I have just caused you to stumble, bro. And we got to be more concerned about those. Go, 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 go on to next verse. <clears throat> And because of your knowledge, shall the weak brother perish? I know something that that brother don't know. And they may, I, I, I was, I was, I was, uh, I was, uh, you all remember the classics back in the day, the club? Some uh, believer had a wedding reception there. And so we attended the wedding reception and... The bar was open at the believer's wedding reception. And I heard that they had no option whether or not the bar was going to be open or closed because the bar is going to be open and they have no control over that for every event. 
but by the looks of things, the bar may have been asked to be open because believers was throwing them back. So it was this bishop that was in there. And the bishop sitting there with his glass of wine now, and I sat down next to the bishop. I said, Bishop, <laughs> see, you got your little wine there. Yeah, you got a little, little wine, a little, little something here. I said, what do you think these other believers are going to be doing when they see the bishop? Maybe the bar is being supported by the believers because the bishop got the drink. See, I don't, I, don't want, I don't want that kind of witness. I keep my witness in the witness protection plan. Why did I get over there? Because it's time for us to put on this lesson as he is and demonstrate it. Purpose the doggone thing in our heart. What, what, what are they saying? Only be careful that this power of choice, this permission, and this liberty, watch this, you got to keep it still, you're making me drunk, <laughs> to do as you please with your, does not somehow become a hindrance or cause the stumbling to the weak. The Bible says, although all things are lawful, all things are not expedient. And you can, I, look, drink as much as you want to drink. What did the pastor just say? Drink as much as you want to drink. And the Bible says, just be, just don't get drunk. But my question to you is, you ain't going to admit to being drunk. Or you don't cross. I ain't drunk. I ain't drunk. Your mama's drunk. You ain't, you, 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 don't, you ain't tell me I'm drunk. When you know you've crossed the line. Certain individuals shouldn't drink. The Bible says kings and priests don't drink of any strong drinks. I see myself differently. That's why I'm not putting it to my mouth. You know what I'm saying? You call me whatever you want to call me. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to call me blessed. Go on, pop your bottles. I mean, some people who are in the church want to be so close to the world, they're going to feel the heat of hell on their back. Now, this is no one's trying to be legalistic or judgmental about anything. You live by your own personal conviction. What is Holy Spirit telling you? You, you have a question? <laughs> I was just thinking that what you just, those two examples could extend to every area, even the example today that you said earlier about you being a male and you're able to kiss another male on the cheek, maybe someone else who's a little weaker isn't able to do that type of thing. So maybe I was just thinking that um, it could extend into any area that you're weak in and maybe watch yourself. Or yeah, if you, have, if you have a bent towards this spirit of homosexuality, you ain't got no business putting your lips on another man. The scripture says, greet your brother with a holy kiss. I've been kissing my boy since he was a boy. He's a grown dog on man. I still kiss him today. Every time we greet each other, I kiss him. One of my armor bearers, we kissing one another. I mean, every time he sees me, he hugs me and he kisses me. It wasn't anything uncommon. That's why Judas didn't think it would be a big deal. But that was the signal to rat on Jesus. He kissed him, no big deal. That was customary. You see, now kissing as it relates to a man, has become perverted. You see? So, but if that's something you can't stand, if I know I like a joker, I ain't going to be kissing a joker. And the whole church said, Amen. 
I ain't never been interested in no dog on man. Never. Okay, okay, let it go, Mike. When you purpose this thing in your heart, that slide, Proverbs 20, let's look at it. Since y'all don't have anything to talk about, let me talk. Okay, well, you have something. What's your something you have to say? This is on. Sometimes it's just no, not going. Yeah. I, I was going to say, um, I was talking to my cousin, and I was just thinking about how you was minister, or you've been saying how the world is getting darker and darker. And I'm, I'm just begin. I'm not. I'm seeing this every day, and so I'm always saying, Lord, let my light shine. Um, but sometimes I'm a little startled because they're. What they were saying to me is that, and I won't name the pastor, that they, and I don't know if this is right or wrong, but I'm thinking it's wrong, that they allowed the go-go bands to come to their ministry. Yeah. And, um, and also they go to the go-go's. It, it, ain't, it ain't right for this ministry. Okay. So they, no, they I was can, just wondering, is that something, you know, because, I mean, I know. That I ain't they, letting that spirit in here. They, okay. They go, yeah, they go to the go-go. And they, they said, because this is how they do Some of them take the go-go beat and incorporate it into a gospel song. No, no. They, they, this is how they're drawing the folks that are lost in. By bringing the bands in and going out to the go-go's, they're drawing um, in. And then they'll say, well, oh, Jesus, you know, he, he sat with the prostitutes. And, you know, they go further on and on. He was with, the, you know, and all the whoremongers and all that. But I was just thinking, I was just like, well, how do we separate ourselves? Um, or how is that a wit good witness if a pastor, if I saw you at the go-go, I would be like, okay, Pastor Mike, what you doing here? You know, no, really, I would. I would be, mm -hmm. I, I would be like, why are you here? I mean... Mm -hmm. Don't you trust God that you can minister besides in the go go? And I know the people say that you gotta they go to clubs to minister, God. There, you don't go. there, there are all different types of circumstances and situations surrounding that. I don't know and I cannot say that I may or may not go. I have learned not to say what I won't do. Okay. You understand? And so if the Spirit of God tells me to go, tell me to go into a setting as such, I'm going in there. Um, um, uh, like I have been invited to one of Puffy's parties. Whose party? Puffy. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I've been invited to the party. And Spirit of God said, oh, no, you aren't. But you got to know when to leave at 11. No, it ain't. It ain't. <laughs> no. You, you got to know. No, you got to know when not to go. Oh, right. I know. I'm just saying that. That was just a, a thought. And I didn't know anything about his parties back then. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, the president of uh, uh, his corporation is a good friend of mine. And we happened to be in Vegas and the party was going. He said, man, we need people like you to come to the party. And then he told me, in the same breath, the problem is when pastors get, come in there, they get swallowed up too. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone, Kim. So I walked away from that one. So I was talking about something entirely different. But I heard Holy Spirit say, no, you, you can't go there. And, and I didn't, you see? So if Holy Spirit had me to go into a go-go setup or situation, I got to figure out how he's going to want this to take place. Because they, I mean, Jesus was caught in places where people didn't think he should have been. Mm -hmm. I remember one time I wanted so bad something to drink and, and my father, he was trying to accommodate me, and we were in uh, his Cadillac. His Cadillac had uh, clergy tags on the back of it. You remember that, Glory? Clergy tag. I can't remember what numbers, but they had numbers, clergy and then a special number 
on the car. And so I said, Dad, man, I'm, I'm, I'm really thirsty. Can, can you stop and get something to drink? He said, son, there's nothing open right there. And I looked up, and I saw a liquor store open. And I said, well, well there, there's, there's a place right there. I'm just trying to get something to drink. So he parked a little away from me, and then he, he put me out. And he said, go, go in there and, and get you something to drink. Well, 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 uh, when the guy put my grape soda in the little bag, I'm coming out the locust store with, with, with the soda can in my bag. He wrote that, if you don't take that doggone soda out that bag, I'm like, what's the problem? And nobody know if that's, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, the Bible says, abstain from even the appearance of evil. Maybe he was, he was wrong for sending me in the liquor store to get anything to drink, but his son was thirsty. Well, anytime that Jesus did miracles on the Sabbath, the religious set complained about it. Okay, okay, Proverbs. Proverbs, after I told you to purpose this thing in your heart, it says, my son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your what? Don't let them out of your sight. Keep them within your what? heart, purpose in your heart, for they, for what they, for what they, my words, for my words are life to those who do what? Find them, and they, my words is health to one's whole body. Above all else, do what? Guard your heart. Next slide, please. I want to just show you some things here, because there are three Final words that I told you I wanted to examine. And that's the word becoming, become, and became. From this lesson, you should be coming, become, or became. You should have become something else than you were from the beginning of this lesson until where you are right now. Like, no, what has changed about your walk since I started this lesson? No, no, no. What, what, have, what has become of you since I started as he is? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not asking you to respond to me, it's rhetorical. I'm asking you to challenge yourself. Like, what are we doing here? That one particular scripture that uh, the Lord showed me in 1 Corinthians chapter number 13, the scripture says, when I was a child, it's right there. Where is it? The, 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 yeah, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. And I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, oh, 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 I transitioned. Remember that in transitive verb, becoming, it's applicable to any object you connect it to. Your house can become better. It doesn't matter what the object is, this ministry can become better. This ministry can become worse. You can become anything for the good or for the bad. Prayerfully, this lesson has caused you to become more as he is. I can't get any help because if you're still hating the same people you hated when this lesson started, what are you doing? No, what the heck are you doing? If, if your life hadn't transitioned from lying to telling the truth, 
if your life hadn't tra transitioned from being a deceiver into someone who's pure, if your life hadn't, hadn't improved from being a child molester from someone who is loving children purely, if your life hadn't moved, I mean, even, even with respect to your grammar, your intellect, what have you improved that will reflect in this mirror him? <coughs> I talked about this earlier and it really messed with me for a minute in between service. I said, they are, they are men who are full grown in full grown whole men's bodies that have never become a man. You are married and you have not become a man. You said I do to someone and you're having babies and you've never become a man. The same little games as a single, the same little proclivities and propensities and disposition like you haven't grown up at all. What are you doing? Okay, this is an equal opportunity ministry. I see you full grown as a woman, like you, 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 you look like a whole woman from the outside, but no one knew that you was this little girl that hadn't grown up or matured at all, still silly, want to play silly little games. Turn to turn to your neighbor and say, he must be talking about some other chick out there I don't know. <laughs> my, my, my. Father, help us continuously. Yeah. As he is. And then I concluded this thing by the Spirit of God with 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. I like it in the King James Version. King James Version, put it up for me on the screen. First Corinthians chapter number 15, 58, King James, please, immediate department. <clears throat> yeah, I know you're working on, therefore, my beloved brethren, whoo, Jesus, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know, your labor, your work is not in vain, in the Lord. This work you put in and are putting in and becoming, we're building something here. We started with TSA, Total Surrendering Agreement. We moved on to as he is, and now we're introducing faith. Mm. For more than ever before. I think we're ready for this lesson. Because we're totally surrendered. We're functioning as he is. Now let's release faith for more than ever before. God dog, I'm a good pastor. God dog, I heard him say it. Since becoming a partner, let me see that. Since becoming a part and go down, go down. Tansy, since she told me to wait. 
Paul Sims said, since becoming a partner, becoming, becoming, I've learned more. I have applied more of what I have learned than ever before, before. Learn to actually forgive and accept being forgiven. That there's a purpose to every design. And since doing so, I feel, come on, Paul, I feel better about myself in life than I have before and excited to continue to grow. Let me tell you something. I have never judged the success of this ministry by its assets. I've only judged the success of this ministry by the transformed lives. And you got some cats, I promise you, who can preach circles around me. <laughs> their articulation, their alliteration, the homiletics, the hermeneutics, they got it all. The cemeteries, I mean seminaries, the degrees, you name it. I mean, they have a way with words that mesmerize people, and it's a show. People just enjoy. Did you hear what they said? Okay, how are you living as a result of what he's saying? And it's the fruit of his life indicative to all of what you've been hearing. That part. Because the Bible says, by this, the stuff I'm teaching you, shall all men know that you are my disciples, disciples, if you have love one for another. This is one of them things this ministry is going to be known for. Them people, them people are God paying honor down there. Glory to God. Any questions? Any comments before we split? Yes, um, uh, 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 tell me. Lariah. Lariah, like Mariah, but Lariah. That just helped me. Lariah, yes, baby. I just wanted to say that I... And I'm so impressed by you. <laughs> I saw you this morning. We met, and... Like, and you're back here this evening? Yeah. Who'd you come back with? Myself, tonight. You drove yourself? Yeah, What I drove are you, myself. about 19, 20? 20. 20? Yeah. And you just jump in the car, 20 years old? From Baltimore. And come back, huh? <laughs> From Baltimore. From Baltimore. Yeah. You, you, got, you got gas money and all to, to, to make it back safely and all that? Yes. You good? Yes. Okay. Okay, talk to me. Um, I was just going to say. That's yes, sir, to you, Mariah. Yes, sir. Low <laughs> I was just going to say, I've learned that I'm becoming so much different than what I'm surrounded by because I go to Morgan State, so I'm. You go to Morgan State? Yeah. So I'm kind of surrounded by. OMG. <laughs> Everybody stretch forth your hand towards <laughs> Lariah. Morgan State gone. Um, so I'm surrounded by people who are subjected to the smoking yep. and drinking. So I have to really separate myself because I'm on a different journey than what they are. So they're not really going to get where I am in life because this is really my commitment and they're committed to other things. So I just wanted to say I'm learning that I'm becoming different than my environment. So. Uh, do you live on campus? No, I don't. I can't. Uh -uh. I'm yeah. not going to live in that area, but I do live in Towson, not too far. You live in Towson area. And I come here Did on you the go home and then come back? Yeah, I'm going to go home. So you drove an hour home and you came an hour back in between services? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. I stayed up here. My family lives up here in the Akakik area. But oh, sweet. So you went and hung out with your family? No, they're in Florida. It's just me. <laughs> oh, so you just went over to the crib? Yeah, I took a little nap and then I was like, oh, I that's what's up. purposed in my heart that I wanted to come. My aunt usually comes. She purposed in her heart that she wanted to come. Yeah. My aunt usually comes with me, but she said she was going to watch online. I was like, well, I'm going to go. Shout, then, shout out your auntie. Your auntie. Aunt Tiffany, I know she's watching. Auntie. <laughs> Girl, she put you out. Said, you didn't want to come, auntie. 
But um, that's beautiful. Yeah, I work up here on the weekends at my family's bar, so I want to make sure I come to this location. I like to physically be in person. I've watched online a couple times, but I prefer to physically be here and really get the word. So I come here on the weekends. I come to service. This is my first time coming to Nightcap physically. I usually watch it online, but I'm going to head back to Baltimore, go to school for the week. I'll be back on Friday, back on Sunday. That's what's so, yeah. up. That's what's up. You know we have the Baltimore location. Yes, and I actually have some friends who I'm trying to get to come, but they're out there. So I told them if they want me to come with them out there, I'll do the same. That's thing. what's but, happening. And I want to turn you on to some of the partners your age. So even mm -hmm. if you don't want to go hang out with your family, sometime you're in the area, you can hang out with some of the partners that are your age that are, are serious about the things of God equally. Yeah. It's not okay. a lot of youngins my age who are serious about I it. I so know, right? I tend to be in rooms where I'm not the same age. Just yeah, that's people. why we, we so. have to raise up that generation yeah. here in this ministry, and that's what I'm set to do. Yeah, and so when you hear about my making the announcement about the 20 to 40 years old, 40 years old, 40 year old, we are separating them from 20 to 30 to 40, but that group, that's the group I'm running after right now. Yeah. And so I need your help in assisting me to get them all. It's my age group is just lost. And aren't they? Aren't they? They're just they're... caught up in what's trending. So uh, even with my friendships, I'm just having a hard time like setting boundaries with people because I really a lot of the stuff they're engaging in. Even my friends are becoming like distasteful for me to be around. So trying to navigate through that is like a big thing for me right now because my age group is just caught up in all the wrong. They're things. all over the place. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Social yeah. media is another part of it. But. Wow. It's difficult to hear someone at your age share that about their peers. Yeah. Uh, we say it all the time, but we were the same wild 20-year-olds <laughs> when we were coming up. Yeah. Uh, but at 20, I had made a decision to love Jesus for the rest of my life, and it has been so rewarding. You hear what I'm saying to you? Uh, so continue. Um, I want you to meet Pastor Breland mm -hmm. soon. She's on maternity <laughs> leave right now. Yeah. And uh, you, need to, you need to have... Um, people of like precious faith connected to you, mm -hmm. okay? Our young people need a platform that gives them an opportunity to express themselves. Yeah, we, we got you, uh, Barbara, we're well ahead of you. Yeah, very proud of you. They're saying they pray, yes, she is. Yeah, yeah, you see there, Rodney? A beautiful, beautiful young woman praying for that young lady. All right. <clears throat> Praise God. Pray for me too now. <laughs> All right. My husband and I purpose it in our hearts to be in attendance, not just to be online. We've now been to all three campuses. That's good. That decision has been a blessing to our marriage family and those we come in contact with them. Thank you all for being examples of Love FCC Central. Tashin, yeah, Tashin, I know, that's not called a Tata. She said, she said that I could. Okay, love you too, uh, Nelson. That's my son, he's a pastor. College can lead someone to Christ. College can lead someone to Christ. My siblings can, my siblings was introduced and introduce us, him to us, her siblings. I don't know what the words he said. Okay, praise the Lord. She's in the right place, right, Cindy? Okay, blessings, uh, Pastor Ronald. All right, Cynthia in North Carolina, thank you for sending love. Uh, any questions from you guys, comments, before we close up? Boy, we finally got this night settled down. Yeah, yeah, we, we've done it much better. Yes, ma'am. I want to comment. I, uh, the day where you was talking about purpose in your heart, and that this been on my heart all day because if you just purpose it in your heart and ask God to help you purpose it in your heart, you can achieve the goals. So my, uh, so the day I said I was going to purpose in my heart.
to be kinder to people. I love it. And kind of look good on YouTube. Yeah, and watch what yeah. I say and how I say things. Be more tender about it instead of so direct. You know, start picking my words. And if somebody bother me, just be quiet. Get your 10 minutes, 10 seconds in before you respond. Because if you wait 10 seconds before you respond to anybody, most of the time you'll change your mind about what you just get ready to say. <laughs> so it won't come out so, you know. So this Hard. lesson over the months have just really blessed me. And even my sister say, girl, you changing. Because sometimes <clears throat> I would, you know, stuff will come and I'm just like, I think about you. I ain't going to do it. You know, so it's, it's, it's really blessing me. To God be the glory. So, Man, Dina and I were riding somewhere. She was driving, and I was in the uh, sh on the shotgun. I was in the past. I love when she drive. You know, and I don't know my Mac Daddy come out. You know, I'm just laying back. <laughs> and so I looked over at the car next to me, and there was this woman. She was she was driving. <laughs> I said, Dee Dee, look 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 at. Her. Lady over there. And she said, What? I said, Ooh, that's a mean lady. Meanness had just come on and disfigured her countenance. I mean, I mean, she. I said, I guarantee you that woman will cuss you out from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. No, no, that spirit will disfigure your countenance. Y'all better get kind on you, and you better get kind on you quick. And kind will extend your life. Yes, yes, baby. Uh, when you were saying what we got from this lesson, um, when you were talking about the giving uh, scripture and it's uh, with life, and it just, uh, it resonated with me that even with my goals, I have to, you know, with my business and I want to do certain things and have, I have to give to that and that's how it gives back to me. I, I think about like a basketball player, like Michael Jordan was good because he gave to that he craft. He purposed that in his heart. And, Yes, he and, and gave, gave to back that to him. Absolutely. And worked on it and worked on it and worked on it. Anything you work on, you're going to get better at. Anything you don't work on, you're going to get worse at. And we're going to have to work on getting out of here. Uh, I'm going to go over some things about as he is answer some questions for Wednesday noon. If you have anything you want to ask about, then get those questions uh, to me or be ready to ask those questions because we're moving on from here. Sunday morning, we're going to introduce faith mm, for more than, how many of y'all know 2024 is the year, what? For more than ever before. So now we are having faith for more than ever before. Because I don't care how much you confess this, you need to understand faith for more than ever before. The principles are pretty much the same. You're going you're gonna to understand that, but we're going to take it to another level because the Bible says, when you pray in Holy Spirit, you build yourself up on your most holy faith. That Ephesians 3.20 is going to come alive in you so much because they're exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. It's going to come through your prayer language, your heavenly language. You aren't even going to know you're asking for all that you're asking for when you pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dr. Didi has this doggone car, uh, this Tesla, and, and you got this thing and you, you got it 
on your phone, and when you walk up to the car, the door opens. I decree every closed door you walk up to, you got something on you that that door is going to open up to you automatically in the name of Jesus. Like never before, more than ever before in Jesus' name. Shout about it, somebody shout. Uh, pray for the Sabell family, uh, Brother Jerry Sabell, of course, went to be with the Lord. Uh, amazing general in the body of Christ. I loved him dearly. Jerry was the real deal. I mean, everything, I, I, I really, really appreciated his life and ministry. He's increased my life in many, many ways. So pray for his family. Uh, they're doing so well, and uh, that's the way we should be. Yes, yeah, Sinead? Oh, I wanted to say that earlier you said that it's a lot of powerful uh, bishops and preachers and everybody look at it, but I think that, and you were like, they're powerful than you and smarter, and it, but they're not you. You understand? Because I feel like I've changed. Because of you, and I don't know why, but it is something. It's, it's, I don't know. You know, I'm allowing myself to listen next. There you go. Because I didn't listen at first. There you go. You know, and I just was like, why? You know, why do I have to? And it's like, just go and just see. But it's something about you that changes me. Wow. My husband, he knows, he understands. So they, those people can be all of these things, but they're not you. Yeah, you got So I appreciate you for that. You, you <laughs> must identify your holy hookup. Yes. Yeah, Amen. yeah. You're, you're set man yes. and set woman. I get it. Uh, there, there, were, there, were, there were thousands of men who I could have been connected to, but Dr. Price was my holy hooker. I mean, I mean, God just knitted our hearts together. And, and the exchange as a result of it was far beyond what I ever imagined. I mean, even today, Dr. Betty, I love her so dearly. I mean, she sent us this beautiful bouquet of flowers and roses and sunflowers. They were all mixed up. Daisies, everything. Lilies, all. Oh, it was just so gorgeous. I told her, I said, I don't, I don't need you sending me another dime. Let me send you money. You send me a card and just the, the fact she prays for us the way she does. You know, I mean, that's, that's my spiritual mother. And I thank God for, I thank God for mom Wooten and dad Wooten. I mean, they just, they are just precious, precious people. My big sister Gloria is here. I'm excited about her. You know, she's the warden of the house and, you know, she regulates everything. She tries to make me do whatever. And she works here in the ministry full time now for the ministry. And I'm, I'm just delighted to have such an amazing family that supports what we do. I got to let you all get out of here. I can hear Dee Dee now. Would you just let the people go? Yeah, yeah. Like, 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 uh, like uh, Moses coming to Pharaoh's house. Let my people go. I love y'all with the love of the Lord. Um, continue to sow into No Lack Nation and scholarship and all that. We, we're doing so amazing financially. If you don't want to sow, the girl didn't come by for the groceries. I would have been here. I was, I was serious. I was going to take her and turn that store upside down. We was going to buy crab legs and filet mignon. We was going to, what? It's going to be your night, girl. Fill up your car, everything. Oh, yeah. She still might make it. She better hurry up. 
Okay, remember these words found in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse 7. Come on, y'all, for we walk by faith and by sight. No, no that's what my daddy said. All right, we'll see you. Hey fam, I'm Sanaya and I want to personally thank you for tuning in to today's service. I know you had an amazing encounter with God, but guess what? It does not have to stop there. If you want to receive salvation, find a church home, or even receive Apostle Mike and Dr. Dee Dee Freeman as your pastors, feel free to scan the QR code on the screen. We would love to have you join us for one of our services in person, so you can join us at 8 a.m. at our Temple Hills location or 10 a.m. at our Brandywine in Baltimore location. And lastly, don't forget to share your takeaways because as our apostle always says, we're teaching you so that you can teach someone else. We can't wait to see you soon, and I pray that you have an amazing week.